Good evening and welcome to this new session organized by the EPP group in this series of talks where we are addressing gender issues. Um, I am going to take a little bit of time to make my um, participants join. Um, now that we are all together, um, a short presentation, again, as I was saying, this is part of the series that the EPP group in the European Parliament is organizing um, in the run up to the International Women's Day. We had two talks before, one where we were addressing early stereotypes uh, that affect the perception of gender. You can check that episode before um, in, the, uh, in the EPP group profile of Instagram. And then we had a second talk uh, last week about women on board. And actually we talked there about the topic that we are addressing today, which is how can the EU help promoting the, uh, women uh, entrepreneurship um, in the in Europe. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And for that, I have this amazing lineup of speakers that you finally can see all here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have okay. Bernil Weiss, uh, who is a member of the European Parliament. She's a member of the Committee on Industry, Research and Energy. She's a substitute uh, member of the Women's Rights and Gender Equality Group, uh, uh, committee, sorry, and she's a rapporteur for Reaching uh, Women's Economic Independence through entrepreneurship and self-employment. We will be talking about that field that it's definitely very important for this conversation. We also have Barbara Boades with us. Uh, she's the co-founder and CEO of Meetup, uh, Meetoptic. And we have Mia Wagner, who is the founder and CEO of Nordic Female Founders. So um, I'm gonna start with Barbara. We've talked before actually on another, on another, uh, on another event and I'm very, very happy to see you it. again. Um, because your story is very interesting and this is what I want to hear about. I, wanna, I want you to tell us a little bit about how was it like to build your company, what, whether it was an overwhelming task or something very straightforward, how was your experience? Yeah, thank you. It was nice seeing you again. To be honest, I didn't recognize you with your name when you sent me the email. So I'm very happy accepting this invitation because I think you guys are amazing. So yeah, thank you. Um, so in terms of my experience, I did physics. I did afterwards a PhD in physics in a field called photonics, which is the technology of light. It's a field maybe not that well known, but it's applied in many technologies, probably all of them that we are using at this moment. So it's about lasers, polarizers, lenses, and cameras spectrometers, detectors, so it, it covers a lot of fields. And I did my PhD in, in this field. Um, I found it, it was quite frustrating that this field is not digitalized or automated or renovated, let's say. It's quite old school in some of the processes, although the technology is quite advanced, um, the one that you will, but with all the processes behind are very old school. So when I finished the PhD, I decided to start uh, with Optics together with James Douglas, which is the co-founder and CTO of the company. And um, it was difficult at the beginning because we thought everything was, was going to be easier and then when you realize <laughs> it's difficult it's like oh okay so we were bootstrapping which it means no money for a year and a half and then we got our first clients and then we closed the first uh, financial round and this helped us have a, a bigger group let's say of, of people which then, then everything gets nicer because well you have to manage with people but people shared your dream and our dream was to make a platform where everyone who wants to understand the photonics field can come and there can find products, can find technologies and can find a community that can help them build the technology. So that was our dream and it's nice that we can share it now with many people. Thank you so much, Barbara, because you actually pointed out a few of the issues that we're going to be discussing about, and one of them is actually uh, funding. Uh, but let me turn now to, uh, uh, to Mia, because um, you work with many companies and I was wondering, what do you think are the main hurdles that they find uh, especially uh, women entrepreneurs, and whether those are the same that uh, men entrepreneurs find when they try to set their business. Yes, and, and yes, I do. And I, I have spent a lot of time with a lot of different companies through my work as an investor and now also as an entrepreneur. Uh, and I think maybe if, if, we want, if we're going to put it in short, I think the main challenge is actually that we don't acknowledge that there's a difference for female entrepreneurs and male entrepreneurs. So when you are a female entrepreneur, you're supposed to um, compete on the same level, but you're not. So you're supposed to have the same opportunities, but you don't. And, and most of the time, the women don't even realize themselves 
that this is why they have struggles, this is why they have issues, as well as in the environment, when you're with an investor or with, when you're with some co-founders or whatever, uh, the discussion is not equal. As I think many of us has learned by now or experienced, then in order to obtain equality, we have to treat people differently. And I think what's important is that this is, I mean, this is just due to historical reasons. This was how it was a long time ago. I, I, in Denmark, it was about, I think, the 1850s. Before then, women weren't even allowed to have their own money. So of course, it will take time. And I think the biggest issue is to acknowledge that we do have a problem and that we do have different um, different uh, opportunities. This is something that we will talk about as well, because one of the issues here as well is the question of work-life balance and how that plays an important role. And this is related to the way that society has been built over the, over the past few years. Uh, now, let me turn first to Bernil before we discuss that, because you have been off, uh, as well working quite a lot on, on women entrepreneurship. And I was wondering, what do you think are the major difficulties in your opinion that women face when they are trying to build their business. Mm. Do, do you share the same view of Mia? Do you think there are other issues that they might be facing that we're not discussing so far? Um, yes, I think uh, uh, Mia has a lot of, of, of truth in what she's saying. Also, that's my experience as being an entrepreneur myself in, for 12 years before going into full-time politics. Um, I even had my... Uh, now x men uh, to, to sign my bank loan, uh, although I wasn't supposed to sign his bank loan for his business. And mm -hmm. I really found that very awkward uh, then. And that was in the middle of uh, 2000 and it was about 2008. So we don't have to go that back, long back in, in history before uh, this um, uh, discourse and culture of equality uh, and non-equality uh, was still prevailing and that we still, uh, still have a lot to do on that. And also that echoes what a lot of women say. Uh, I have uh, talked with a lot of uh, female entrepreneurs and what they echo is that there is this uh, lack of knowing the landscape of investors and role models. Uh, to find self-confidence, to grow self-confidence, but also to grow network, uh, to find role models uh, from which they can learn, from which they can mirror themselves. Uh, and, and that is what we are trying to do with the report to address some of these very, very important issues uh, to make more women uh, empowered to do not only seen from an equality point of view, but also that it really to boost the uh, European economy, to make our economy grow. We need the power. We need the, uh, the innovation that comes from diversity and that comes from more women taking part in uh, business development. We were talking about that last week, actually, and the fact that having women on board actually makes economic sense. Companies that have a bigger share of women in their boards are actually doing way better than other companies that they don't reflect that diversity that we have uh, in real life. And, and I think it's also interesting that we, we address not only issues that are entirely related to what it's like to be an entrepreneur, but further away, understanding that because the society works as, as it does, that has an impact as well on the opportunities that women have. Uh, and that's, that's a, a conversation that we definitely need to have. Um, let me turn to Barbara again and ask you, um, how do you feel about the kind of support that you were um, given when you were building your business? Do you think that it reflected all these different uh, inequalities and all these differences in terms of accessing to family, in terms of uh, building the company that makes you uh, sometimes being lagging behind from uh, other men entrepreneurs that were going into business? Yeah, it's it's very like tough and difficult topic to talk about. I think it's it's good that, that you pointed out the network. I think the network is something difficult when you are a woman in a male dominated environment because typically you you tend to do a network with people that you are close by. So before answering your question, I wanted to point out that this is a very important issue, the, the network part. So it, it's very nice when people promote networks of women entrepreneurs or any other kind of women networks. And then for the question of the funding opportunities, I would say it's very difficult 
to know with a single data point, like if it's something about the project, if it's something about you personally. So I think we need to look at the statistics and have many <laughs> data points, and then from that um, extrapolate and, and see the reality. You know? So what's the percentages of people that are women that apply and get the funding and so on. So in my personal case, I found it very nice that um, the, in, the, in a local environment, there are a lot of funding opportunities and also help uh, for the government that they help you maybe with HR in recruiting people. They help you as well in mentoring you. So there are a lot of ex-founders uh, or ex-entrepreneurs that they are willing to help new entrepreneurs. And this, I found it that it doesn't, it, it, like, I don't know, it's not a gender bias, but at least I have mentors that are male and female. But it's true that uh, I think 80% of my investors are women and I have about 30 or something. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, maybe there is, a, there is a, some statistics there to take, but it's very difficult to do it in a, in a, um, in a smaller scale level. And more uh, maybe in the European level, it's very nice that there have been um, not, not a strategy, but funding uh, specifically related for women because those encourage more women to apply and then the ratios didn't have to be enforced, but um, they could be just um, as fair as it was female or male. So that was very nice as well. Thank you about that, because again, things that mentioned both Bernil and you about the, in the question of network and having support uh, from other female entrepreneurs and having role models is absolutely key. Mia, do you, uh, you are part of these amazing Nordic female founders um, organization. Um, how do you see this issue? How important it is for other female entrepreneurs knowing that they have support from people who have gone through the same issues, who have faced the same problems and that they can count on them? And going back to the uh, funding question, how do you help those companies get through the valley of that where you don't have enough funding yet uh, to make it into business? Well, I, th I think maybe first of all, I should just briefly describe what we are doing. Uh, and then, of course, the reason we're doing it is because we realized that there's just uh, women, well, from starters in Denmark, but it's a global problem. I just lagging behind when it comes to entrepreneurship and and we really i realized or we realized how important it is to you know to get this started because we'll be another 10 years or maybe 15 before you actually really get the effect of this so we have to start now building companies made by women or at least with women uh and so i was really astonished when we found out that so few female entrepreneurs actually get investments so in denmark it's about it's less than one percent of the investments goes to you know only female entrepreneurs and the 89% no sorry 98% of the investments are actually addressed to purely male entrepreneurs so it's There's really a bias there yeah so it's, it's really in in not in any way equal and would would we not do anything it would just never change because the difference is so big and so what we did was we tried to start to collect the knowledge available and found out that what's really important is the access, as we've heard already now today, the access to the right network, uh, you know, knowledge. Also in just basic good knowledge of how to minimize your risk when you drive it, when you have a company. So there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, education needed to be done among the female entrepreneurs, uh, probably also the male entrepreneurs. I just didn't ask them. I'm only asking the female entrepreneurs just to find out what, what are their needs. And of course, there is also a big issue of personal development. We found out that the, the sense of you feeling that you need to be perfect as a woman is actually restraining you from making your own company. So you're not living your dream because you're afraid you're not going to succeed. So these three items, we just needed to find a way. How can we put those together and actually make an, an impact? And, and what we are doing is we are uh, developing female business angels. Because this is the first step, right? We need to get more women to invest. And we do that among, along with male entrepreneurs. So we're just turning things around. In our, our, our organization, it's about, I think, 85% female business angels. So we're together with the men, but we're the ones, they're the minority now. And what we do is we've also made what you call an accelerator, just educate female entrepreneurs, finding out how do you both evolve yourself and how do you make a business as scalable? And then of course, bringing these two together, we make small boards. 
So in that way, we can get more females on the board as well. And our hope is by making these small systems, we would actually see them grow and we would actually make an impact. Um, so it has been very important for us to do something activistic. And we've, we collected this in a house. So that's how we're going to do it uh, from June and forward. Just, just to, to say what we're doing now. Which is very interesting because when, mm -hmm. when I hear you talk, I can see coming up all the different discussions that we've, all, we've been having over the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the fact that sometimes it's a struggle for female to go into businesses because they perceive that they're going to be less successful. Mm -hmm. This goes back to the earlier stereotypes that we were talking about the first week because they've never been perceived as leading, as um, going into an adventure. Then they might not feel that they are entitled to take their business forward and to make a and to make a jump into into this uh, reality and then when we when we see that uh, there are other female doing the same uh, that they can support each other they might be a little bit more encouraged um i i think it's interesting that you mentioned the question of bias of funding and i wanted to come back to Bernal on this one because you've been working as a rapporteur of this initiative on mm -hmm researching women's um, economic independence uh, through entrepreneurship. And I was wondering, what do you think this initiative and the EU in general could do to support uh, women in entrepreneurship? And in this sense, how to address the issues that we are discussing mm. right now uh, that are affecting them? There's a lot we can do. Uh, and I really think that it's important that we address uh, the bias and the source of why we are biased And, and usually it's because of the lack of knowledge. And as Barbara also says, uh, we need some more uh, data crunching uh, to be able to come up with uh, recommendations and also evaluations of what does member states do or do not? Uh, what do uh, special environments and entrepreneurs do just like uh, Mia and, and others? So that we as uh, the European institution can help to spin around uh, uh, the best practices and also to raise awareness uh, so that we are not biased, but also to lift up what is very important in the case that, that uh, Mia puts forward with this kind of gender conscious uh, investor networks. Um, actually, we have today uh, a chronicle, Mia and I, in the, in the Danish uh, uh, newspaper on exactly that. And I really hope that uh, we can make this a kind of a first mover model uh, that can be in every uh, EU member state, that these houses where uh, female entrepreneurs also meet with investors, both uh, genders, uh, of course, uh, so that it's, it's better to, uh, to do this cross-pollinating Uh, in between the um, the ecosystem in business, because there are investors, there are entrepreneurs, but there are also these uh, uh, free angels of uh, special competences. They can are good for a business in the startup phase, and then maybe in the growth phase, uh, there are other people that you need to have around you and your business to make it grow. What we also <laughs> what we also could yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we also must do uh, and that was i was very happy to hear that suggestion coming from a lot of women from uh, um, many member states is that they really don't want to waste their time and they don't want to speak with those who are equal or do the same business as themselves the power and the curiosity to do innovation by Uh, learning from other businesses, learning from other sectors, other countries are very strong among women. And that could really be a powerful tool to use in the ambition that we really need to boost uh, a lot more how to strengthen and make our uh, European economy grow. So what we can do, data, evaluations, best practice, networks development, but also that we help uh, interpretate and communicate the, the many public um, uh, programs and funding opportunities that really are. I mean, it's not, a, it, it, it's not a matter of taking away money that men usually get, but actually just to, to raise the awareness of the availability and also to raise the awareness of the program leaders that please look out for also the female applicants because the return on investment by investing in a female entrepreneur is actually bigger, says data. Uh, so also there is a bias from investors. They need to know where to put their, ma their money uh, to, to grow more profit. So that is what we can do in the union.
Like, I mean, it makes economic sense. It's just as simple as that. Um, yes. You touched on the question of going beyond the first phase of entrepreneurship. And I wanted oh. to go back to Barbara about that. Uh, what are the, the issues that you face when you see your company grow? What is it that you're confronted with and how do you tackle those issues? So you need to know that sentence. <laughs> and that's difficult. Mm -hmm. That's difficult to know exactly what people want to hear. And then and maybe your business are amazing, but if you cannot communicate about it, it is difficult. And the second phase, maybe a bit more advanced phase, is the team, how you... Um, yeah, how we, how you become a good leader, you know, because uh, I tend to want to be a good leader, but then puts a lot of pressure of understanding Is people happy, I'm not happy, are we, are I'm, am I doing the best thing for the business by caring so much about people? So you know, this balance, it's always uh, important to take into account. So I think, yeah, people and communication is the, the most difficult part the two keys for the future. Uh, back to Bernie, uh for a, a comment on the question that we were talking about before, the question of work-life balance. How <laughs> important do you think this is for, uh, for women that decide to go into entrepreneurship? <coughs> and to what extent that's a hurdle uh, because, of mm. all the, because of the way society works so far? Mm. It's very, very key. Uh, <clears throat> being also an entrepreneur myself um, for 12 years, <clears throat> I know how it is a struggle uh, to juggle uh, between uh, between uh, work uh, life uh, balance. Mia, yeah. yeah, um, I wanted to ask you as well about how do you think that you can support not only uh, women that decide to go into entrepreneurship, but also how they can support um, organizations like yours who are actually boosting that that representation of women in entrepreneurship. Well, first of all, I really want to say thank you to Penelope because she's been a great support. Uh, and, and for us, you know, because we're also struggling every day, just trying to build this. Uh, it's just so great to feel, to just get that, yeah, get that support. And also to know that it's not only what we see, it's what you see, Penelope. This is an issue. Well, it is in the Europe. It's actually mm. a global issue. But it's, it's great to get that support. And a lot of people have been very supportive. And I think that's important to mention too, that we are getting a lot of help, also help educating both entrepreneurs and investors because in general, many companies want to do this. They, they want to do to make a difference. So this is just great. And, and what we would need for support, I think it's important to acknowledge that we are part of the system. We are female investors as well as female entrepreneurs. And I think that's one of the reasons we understand the need so well. And giving the opportunity to, of course, get funding, it would be important to have that freedom that we can do this, you know, from bottom and up. We can do this. We can let it evolve as we would do in, in a regular company. We would let this grow where the need is. Uh, and if we had to be too strict when we do, you know, applicate for, for means in any way, it would just give us limitations. So uh, we haven't had any yet. Uh, you know, we haven't had public funding in that, in that manner yet. We have had some, but we had to give it up because it was just too much of a limitation. Um, so I really would love to have more freedom so you could acknowledge what we see and what we build because we build it for the market. That's what we do. And of course, oh, I really love the idea of taking this investor network or, um, that we have already and making this a European thing. I mean, giving the connections cross countries. And I think that's exactly what we should do. We should make it so much easier to scale internationally. And we can do that together. Uh, and we wouldn't be able to do that alone, of course, or we would, but it would take us longer time. So I think any kind of help doing that and of course, help connecting, connecting the dots from country to country is important. And then I must say also, uh, being a Dane, uh, putting just a slight pressure on the Danes would be nice for them to move a little faster. But we do our best already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she does. Um, Bernal, going back to yeah. you again. Um, first of all, um, this question about work-life balance, because yes, the parliament yes, has yes. all their kind of yeah. legislation. But also I would like to have a follow-up on what Mia was saying, because you were nodding very strongly, and I want to know what the parliament is ready to do to support these organizations. Well, it's very, very important that uh, the member states all um, um, raise their awareness and knowledge about how much they actually can do with the way that they organize both the health and the social and the school systems, because... If there are no after-school package uh, for, for young families, and, and especially for, 
for female entrepreneurs, then you do have to strike some kind of balance as a woman. And that is when the, then the business is being put aside. And that's a shame for, for the, uh, the, the women empowerment and, and the, uh, the, to pursue uh, actually uh, the power that the, the woman has, also the contribution that this female can have on uh, our uh, economic uh, growth. So uh, it is very important that uh, also the union can facilitate to help the member states to get more knowledge about how actually to organize the uh, social and uh, the school and the uh, healthcare sector in a way that it supports young families and, and also young families where both uh, uh, parents are, uh, um, are working as entrepreneurs. Of course, the union shouldn't say what the member states should do. It's a national member state's competence. But since we in this field know that both the entrepreneurs, uh, no, no, the, the, the investors and the member states actually do not know how great a power tool for the European growth and development that lies in uh, females and, and, and especially also females that, that has a family and, and have this ability to be uh, not wasting time, being innovative, creative, but also to use the observations that a lot of women do in uh, where they work now, maybe in the social and the healthcare sector, but they see so many, they experience so many business opportunities in the public healthcare sector or the public uh, social uh, sector that needs to be innovated and made into uh, actually a business uh, adventure. So also there, we as the union can get help the, uh, the member states in how to help women where they work right now to meet uh, the, the, uh, the more engineering uh, innovators and, and then make a kind of a team up uh, so that also the new businesses that grow from female entrepreneurship is because we are good at doing the matchmaking in between sectors uh, that could really be strong. And I think that the, the union also there can create, create a lot of value for the member states to help them to learn from each other. Brilliant. I think there are four messages that we had here today. Uh, first of all, let's acknowledge the differences uh, in the challenges that uh, men and women face when they decide to go into entrepreneurship. If you are an investor, make sure that you invest in female lead uh, companies because it makes economic sense. If you are a woman and you're in entrepreneurship, make sure that you join a network so can you, you can help other women to go into business and support them in their adventure. And um, let's uh, build those network and go into uh, and mm. make sure that we support each other so that we can keep on boosting the economic, uh, mm. the, econ the economy of the union that depends as well on women uh, going into business. Thank yeah. you so much uh, to the three of you for this very interesting time. It was absolutely amazing. And those of you who follow us live as well, thank you so much. We're going to uh, save this talk on the EPP uh, group account on Instagram so you can go back to it and enjoy it. And have a nice evening and see you next week. Thank you, Beatrice. Yeah. Thank you, Mia. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Barbara. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice meeting you. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>